still fire a little bit of everywhere. We have a lot of questions out there. You probably have way more questions than we have answers to. But today we're going to work really hard to answer as many questions as we can. And we're still trying to gather information for the questions that we don't have. And this afternoon we're going to focus on some of that. I do want to start by talking a little bit about Unified Command because uh, there's a lot of questions about who's in charge of this thing anyway. Uh, and you know what? This is who's in charge right here. And this is called a Unified Command. And under a Unified Command, it doesn't make you weaker. A Unified Command makes you stronger. Each of the people here have come together on your behalf to, to, to work together as one team. We do a delegation of authority to an incident commander, but every single day we are at the table making sure that we're looking at the big picture and not just the individual picture. Because as we know, we stand stronger together than we ever do apart. So we are connected, we are working together as a team on your behalf, and we are going to continue to work together as a team until we put this thing out. As you look at the map here today, you'll see that we had a little bit of activity yesterday that increased the acreage of the fire. Hello? Currently, the acreage of the fire is 15,324 acres. We were about no, it's still we on the first. I've been today. out on the so lower, and it's everywhere here, here in our area. Impacted here but. and impacted in the city. Rich is going to mm -hmm. uh, kind of talk yeah, about kind of what's going on in the National Forest lands. Uh, the fire chief is going to talk about what's happening in the city. Another question that people have a lot of uh, concerns about is, uh, where do I go? Where, where, where are the shelters? We're going to talk a little bit about that. Another question uh, that a lot of people are having is, how do I find out about my home? I know when you look at this map, without me having anything on it, you can kind of see an area where you live. We're working really hard on putting together an assessment. The worst thing in the world we could do is to just kind of throw some ballpark figure out at you or estimate that it's your house, when in reality, it's not you at all. We've had a lot of successes. Uh, we've had some places where we've had some fallbacks where we haven't been as successful. We've had way more successes than we've had failures. We're early in the season. This fire is going to be going on for a long time. A lot of people were saying, hey, it looks like things are calming down. It's maybe calming down in one area, but where it's not roaring here, it's roaring someplace else. But we're committed to this fight. We're going to be in this together in a unified command to the very end. With that, I think it's important that you guys hear from the fire chief and talk about what's kind of going on in the city, and we're just kind of work our way through this. At the end, we're going to have some uh, folks talk to us from Public Health and Safety and Colorado Springs Utilities, because there has been a lot of concern about uh, utilities and just public health things that are going on. So with that, let's get started. Thanks, Jerry. Good morning. Uh, Rich Brown, Colorado Springs Fire Department Fire Chief. Uh, like Jerry's talking about, uh, We've been in constant conversation since Saturday. Uh, as you all know, we've been dealing with this situation since Saturday about noon. Um, but what I do want to talk about today is is to not be deceived by what you see across the valley there. Uh, our people have been fighting that fire, all of our people, let's make that clear, all of our people have been fighting that fire all night long. They're fighting it as we speak. Um, and the thing that I, I want to highlight to you all is that this is not a defensive situation by any stretch. There are countless, countless uh, uh, examples of saves, house saved. Uh, there are some homes impact, there's no question about it. I am absolutely not uh, prepared to release that number. We don't know the number. Again, this is an active fire. It's not even remotely close to being contained. Uh, so please do not be uh, deceived by what you see across the valley with the smoke laying down the way it is. Um, so, but again, we're, we're working as a team on this issue, making sure that we have all our bases covered from north to Denver to south to Pueblo. All of our partners are here uh, working this uh, in concert. Um, I also want to talk about that we still have a city to run. You know, there's 20 fire stations out there and police officers and, and firefighters running calls left and right because the business of the business is still at hand. We still have a city to manage, and we are doing that. We've uh, uh, had a lot of our neighbors come in and uh, uh, fill a lot of our stations. We've backfilled our stations with a lot of our DOD partners around the, uh, around the city. And so I just want you to know that 
while this is a, a, a monster event happening behind us, the city is still managed. Let's be very clear about that. I mean, and it still runs as it typically does with many, 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 many calls for service that go on and are not attached to this fire here. But I do want to emphasize that we are not in a defensive position, we're in an offensive position. We're doing everything we can to save homes going forward uh, with all the members of the city, the county, the state, and the federal partners that are involved in this. And uh, uh, again, uh, we'll give as much uh, 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 immediate uh, updates as we can going forward, but right now we're not prepared to do that. Thank you. Good morning. Colorado Springs Police Chief Pete Carey. Last night, as you already know, was a very, very busy night. In addition to running the rest of the city, the police department, in conjunction with the fire department and other law enforcement officials, evacuated approximately 26,000 people uh, to various sites throughout the city. Uh, today is going to be another very busy day. I want to let you know that the affected neighborhoods will be protected uh, by our police officers at both traffic control points and officers in vehicles. Expect to see some police officers that aren't Colorado Springs police officers, deputy sheriffs, and some police officers from other jurisdictions helping out. So um, as Chief Brown said, the city's in good hands. Uh, we're continuing to monitor the situation as well as respond to any other situations that aren't part of this uh, uh, fire. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Lieutenant Jeff Kramer with the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. I want to uh, first start off by saying I fielded a number of phone calls this morning uh, from media looking for updates, et cetera, and I, I was posed a, a common question. They were asking if I'd ever seen anything like this in Colorado Springs, and uh, I'm a native of Colorado Springs, and I can tell you that uh, this event that's going on is certainly unprecedented uh, in, in the city for sure, and uh, as, a, as a member of this community, uh, I'm impacted. I'm as concerned as all of you out there and all of the folks that are uh, affected directly by this fire and indirectly by the fire. I want to just reiterate something that has been a common theme. Uh, from the speakers who went before me. Uh, teamwork. I want to share two stories, that uh, small stories, but they reiterate and uh, solidify that theme that really permeates through this entire operation. We had a phone call come in last night from a commander from one of the divisions of the Colorado Springs Police Department, and he said, uh, hey, would you guys be able to maybe uh, offer some personnel tomorrow, meaning today, uh, to assist uh, giving our officers some relief on some traffic control points. Uh, of course, I ran the request by the sheriff, and, and his uh, response was basically, you give them whatever we can give them uh, to help them out. And so we're working on that plan of making sure they're going to get whatever personnel we have that we can offer for that effort. Again, a small story, but one that uh, uh, expresses the attitude that really permeates this entire operation. Uh, Rich Heberlo, who's one of our fire investigators, he made uh, some phone calls to some of the rural uh, fire uh, districts in the area, and uh, through some quick phone calls, Calls, ended up gaining about 32 apparatus and 100 firefighters uh, represented across 10 different agencies that dropped what they were doing to come assist as well. So that's important to know. Uh, now just quickly, uh, an update on the Highway 24 corridor. Um, just briefly, uh, that area remains relatively unchanged. Uh, that line is holding. We do not have fire on the south side of Highway 24 through U Pass. There was at least one spot over. However, because of the diligence of the crews located there, they were on that very quickly, and that has not affected uh, that area. The evacuations we have remain in place. Highway 24 is still closed as well. Thanks for your time. Good morning. Steve Bach, Mayor for the City of Colorado Springs. Our police department yesterday evacuated 26,000 people in short order with no injuries that we know of. I'm so proud of our fire department and our police department for the professional work they've done so far. As uh, Jerry said, we are a unified group here fighting this fire. And um, I'm very proud of this team and all you're doing. These people are working 24-7. There are hundreds and hundreds of people behind them on the lines. And I would just say right now as a city that we are unified as well. This is a very difficult time in our city, but we will get through this together and we will be stronger because of this experience. And we need to keep in our minds and our hearts all those people who have been impacted by this fire and all those who are risking their lives to fight it. Thank you. Brent Waters, I'm the emergency manager director for the city of Colorado Springs. So I want to give you a few updates uh, right now. The uh, shelters that we have open at this point are still Lewis Palmer High School. Cheyenne Mountain High School and the Southeast YMCA. We also have the Summit Middle School Divide. Those are st they they'll still have capacity. We still have capacity at those shelters. Our goal at those shelters is not only to shelter people, but make sure they have the updates and the recent information 
uh, about uh, them being evacuated. So please stop by there uh, if you need information. One of the issues that uh, we also want to discuss is uh, the issue of people thinking uh, or wanting to know if their home has been uh, burned. And we're going to do that in a couple of ways. One is you can go to the redcross.org. Uh, and under the, under the uh, getting assistance, there's loved ones, and you can check in with loved ones there and communicate if you're worried about a loved one uh, who's, uh, who's perhaps uh, not accounted for at this point. We, we don't know of anyone at that point, uh, at this point, however. We're going to do an initial damage assessment to identify uh, which homes have been impacted uh, from this event. We're, we're closely uh, with Culver Springs Fire Department, our incident management team, and the police department to do that safely. As Chief Brown talked about, this is an active fire. We want to do this safely, but we also want to get you the information that you need to make sure uh, how to know how you've been impacted. This is important to us and obviously important to you. Uh, there's a couple ways we're going to do that. We're going to cross-check that. We want to contact you directly on that. We're going to have more information in our afternoon briefing. In the meantime, we also have the Joint Information Center set up. You should have the phone numbers. Let me repeat a couple of those. 719-520-7058 and also 720-402-7935. Uh, also, uh, as something of note, uh, we have a um, animal shelter set at the Shine Mountain High School. The Humane Society, as I understand it, is full at this point. However, they set, they set up a secondary site at 3650 North Nevada for animal sheltering. Lastly, um, as the mayor and, and chief Kerry talked about, 26,000 residents were evacuated. I want you to know that we've been committed to planning for this event. Uh, we have done evacuation planning and modeling uh, with traffic for this scenario um, prior to this happening. Um, law enforcement <coughs> stepped up before this happened and worked with emergency management and fire I speak to every council of governments to actually do planning, evacuation planning, modeling for this very scenario. So, thank you. Good morning, Rich Harvey, the incident uh, commander for the uh, Waldo Canyon incident. Uh, yesterday was a very challenging day, and um, it's almost a historically challenging day. And I, I'd like to reiterate what a lot of folks up here have already said that our response to that challenge has been unified. It's been across all agencies and jurisdictions. It's been across um, law enforcement, police, medical. Um, the whole community, in fact, is working together along Colorado and the nation to support the citizens and the firefighters that are out there on the line doing the, doing the work that needs to be done. Um, we had, I told you last night, we had 800 firefighters on the line. We brought in 200 more last night, and we have more in the pipeline coming today and getting out on the line today. We've been using every possible avenue to bring in resources available to us. We've gone through the county EOC, we've gone through federal ordering systems, we've gone neighbor to neighbor, we've, we've tapped friends, we've gone to mutual aid, we've done everything we can to get the right resources here to do the job. Our planning staff was up late last night taking the latest assessment and turning that into a plan of action on the incident for today. And our focus out there today is on the entire fire. Okay, you'll see a perimeter behind me, and you'll see these divisions labeled F, E, C, all those different divisions. We have firefighters in each of those divisions with the equipment necessary to start doing the construction of line, establishment of anchor points, the, the point protection for structures and values at risk in that area, to be actively engaged on a, on a collaborative approach to getting this fire closer to containment. We continue to be at 5% containment. The good news yesterday was that we were able to hold what we had established here in 24, uh, along the 24 corridor, got it down closer to the road, and we're making some progress. As you know, the bad news yesterday was this was a very much of a wind-driven fire. We expect further trouble from the weather today. Not so much in terms of sustained winds from one direction, but we expect the development of thunderstorms over the fire this afternoon. Thunderstorms present a unique problem for us in that the wind can come in any direction from those at any time with pretty strong gusts. So we do expect all of our lines to be challenged again today. We hope to have the positions both but still on the ground, be better than being uh, personnel both on the ground, in the air, and supporting them 
to be able to deal with the, what the fire throws at us in the best possible way today. I would like to say that the cooperative efforts are, are most noticeable in the safety record. Several people have mentioned the evacuations of 26,000 people without injury or incident. 